So let me start. <coughs> of course, one can jump on one's chair like a kid or like a young goat and repeat, Europe, 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 Europe. <laughs> but this leads to nowhere and signifies nothing. This is what Charles de Gaulle said on December 14, 1965, prompting a great scandal among the lady do writers of his time. Today, 47 years after, those who dislike empty words or words pronounced to produce the opposite effect of what they should mean, we have the absolute human right to despise the walking shadow that Europe has become, as they say, as ugly as a sin. There is no more Europe, true Europe, because European states had given up their national sovereignty to two interrelated entities. Firstly, to what the goal relentlessly denounced as a British or Anglo-American empire, a conglomerate of oligarchical and financial interests based in the networks of the city of London. That was the first. But secondly, to the mediation of these interests on our continent through this thing that José Manuel Barroso, the head of the European Union Commission, once called a non-imperial empire. The collusion between these two entities is like a Faustian pact. The British Empire has a power of finances, money, intelligence, ideology, and the European Union destroys itself to the benefit of such an imperial empire thanks to the voluntary servitude. The voluntary servitude of whom? Of us. Of us subjects of the non-imperial empire, a continental empire not built by mere force, but by the consent of its members, of its member states, to the ruling oligarchy, member states who hide behind what they themselves have created, that the monster they have themselves created. At this historical moment, all of us Europeans should be ashamed to be in such an unpleasant and immoral position. When the systematic cost-cutting policy of the empire loots the very basis of our society, perverts the mind of our youth, of our children, with a culture of death, and wrecks the creative powers of human labor. Nonetheless, habits rule, even at the brink of the pit, because what has been so profoundly hit is the best of our common cultures. It is a belief in the process of progress, the very meaning of the existence of mankind. This is what has been hit. What has been stolen from us is a social capacity to participate and lead in the process. What has been stolen from us is a language of an artistically and scientifically creative imagination. What has been stolen from us is a human intention to discover principles. Europe has become an unprincipled absurd chaos of different voices without any sense of community of purpose, without an unit. Let me, let me give you two examples. First, I was three weeks ago to the Paris Games Week, a yearly celebration of video games because a journalist wanted to interview me there. It was a crude experience because there you had all these very young kids most of them under 20 or 25, waving and screaming in front of screens, playing to first-person shooter games, smashed by an addictive environment of extremely loud sounds, supposed to be music, 
sounds that were spread in the dark. Such a chaos represents for me a black metaphor of what Europe has become. Sounds without music, words without sentences, images appealing to sense perception, and people reduced to bestialized addictive victims. Second example, just this week, there has been an international colloquium in Paris titled Selection, Sorting Out, and Triage in Medicine, Logics, Practices, and Values. The presentations were on the conditions of possibility for the concept of triage, 18th to 21st century perspective. With the promotion of the Harvard Medical School, the Liverpool Care Pathway for the Aging Patient, and of Tony Blair's NICE, National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence. Remember that Dr. Leo Alexander at the Nuremberg Trials said that when you put a price to human life, you commit a crime against humanity. I just bring these two examples to you to make clear that new Nuremberg criminals are banging at our doors. Some are already inside our rooms. And that our mission in Europe is not just to correct some mistaken concept and eventually find a refuge in the safe houses of our respective nations. It's not that. It's to save mankind. That should be the mission of Europe. What we have under the present name of Europe is a relation between subservient subjects and the established institutions that destroys them, and not between citizens and a state of law organized by consent on principles. This is precisely what French author La Boétie identified as a voluntary servitude during the wars of religion of the 16th century. And it leads us to a situation of economic collapse which has already created the conditions for wars because war is the most inhuman thing that human beings can do to each other. And they do it when they have been turned into inhuman beings. The characteristic of this moment, our present moment, is that the threat of the flight forward of the oligarchy has thermonuclear teeth. That's the difference with other moments of history leading to wars. This time is with thermonuclear teeth, as it was <coughs> uh, explained yesterday by El Gazep LaRouche. Nuremberg and the threat of an escalation towards a thermonuclear confrontation, this is therefore what defines our situation here and now. Our mission is therefore to remove things that are a threat to the continued existence of mankind and the continued existence of our societies. And that is not only the British Empire as such, but the principle of the British Empire that infects our way to think, or better, better say, that targets our capacity to think in a creative way. At the same time, we have to present, we have to fight for a political composition, not defined by deduction from where we are, which could only bring disaster, but to steer something in the minds that give the sense that better, higher orders of humanity can be reached. For that purpose, and it is a very concrete, immediate one, we have, as Europeans, to recover our national and individual sovereignties against imperial and non-imperial empires. Because a community of purpose cannot be generated within a political cage, but has to unite to combine freely different aspects of one idea. The best way to put it, I think, is that Europe has to be composed not like a mathematic or romantic combination of sounds, like a piece of Strauss, Rameau, or Elgar's pump and circumstance, 
but like a composition of Bach as a language combining different statements of the same idea. These different statements are the contribution of our nations breaking from the shackles of oligarchic and imperial principle to drive towards the future the minds of all through the common accomplishments of a great design. First, we have to present the empire, to prevent the empire to harm. This is all about the Glass-Steagall principle in economics. If you don't enforce it, you cannot get the key to open the door for the future. It is only the key, but without a key, you cannot open the door which leads to the world garden where lies the undiscovered principle of our common European future. In that sense, Glass-Steagall is both a political weapon and the expression of a leap of the mind. It puts an end to the universal bank, the so-called universal bank, to those banks too big to fail, too big to manage, too big to check, and too big to jail. Because as long as you authorize a process of monetary creation inherent to a commercial bank, within the investment bank, the consequence is to attract never-ending quantities of new money towards all kinds of spreading speculations and to create indefinite or practically <clears throat> indefinite within the system bubbles, financial bubbles, to the benefit of those that Roosevelt called the monarchists of the economy. On one side, there are the commercial or credit and deposit banks. And on the other side, the market activities. If the two are not separated, money issuance finances speculation that destroys the whole economy. Therefore, no more bailout of investment banking. The derivative folly should also be stopped. At this point, a dozen of megabanks control about 85% of this derivatives market and 90% are operated in the dark pools of the shadow banking without any public control. And it's a market amounting to more than 10 times the gross national product of the planet. The obvious first mission of Europe, if Europe is worth that name, should be to shut down such a volcano instead of feeding it with the European Central Bank uh, and uh, the ESM, the European Stability Mechanism. Once we have checked and cleaned the mess, we have to build the future. This means to understand what the word economics and the reality of economics mean. It is not to buy cheap and sell dear monetary products and to add the profits to come out with a gross national product. Economics is defined by the capacity to guarantee the life of more human beings with more qualified employment and the capacity to master more and more advanced technologies. The idea of density is crucial. The energy flux density, allowing to produce more and better with less physical efforts, less occupied land, and less matter involved. With some little thing, you can do much more than with tons and tons of wood, for example. This is what allows the long-term survival of humanity at a higher and higher level of intervention from generation to generation to fulfill our mission to increase the development of the human mind across those generations into the future. The takeoff toward the future is to create a platform for such development. Physical infrastructure, water management, energy, high-speed transportation, as it was said yesterday, it's going to be repeated today, and human infrastructure, education, public health, R&D, innovation, an exchange of men goods and ideas through development corridors. You have heard yesterday 
about a revolutionary development plan for the Near and Middle East. Our fight for an Eurasian land bridge reaching into the Mediterranean and Africa to become an East-West and North-South world land bridge. We have once and for all to stop the suicidal policies of cost-cutting, austerity, and human destruction and go back to the spirit of the policies of Roosevelt and the reconstruction of Europe after World War II. The answer that the enemies of such policy give is let's be realistic. Let's be practical. There is no money for such ideal projects. In fact, what they are saying is let's be realistic. Let's commit suicide. <laughs> Here comes the concept of credit. Economies are not built on the basis of savings or money issuance per se. They are built with credit for investments whose effect creates the conditions to pay back the credit. Credit, as people in the Credit Anstalt für Wiederaufbau in Germany and in the French Planning Commission after World War II understood very well, credit is a bet for the future. The alternative is destruction. Proof of it is that without savings or rents, with human creativity and some funds of the Marshall Plan, Europe was then rebuilt from scratch with such a political approach after World War II. While today we are self-destroying ourselves with an opposite money system, the future of the European nations is the capacity to go back to such policies with Eurasia the Mediterranean space, the Middle East, the Near East, and Africa being the touchstones of our identity and survival. We have a mission, if we are worth our name and our history, towards the world and this uh, world land bridge development. What we need for it is enthusiasm, what the Greeks called the inner god, here is a source, and to wait is a crime. Such a credit system is incompatible with a euro system, which is by political intention a money system in the service of the oligarchy. It cannot be arranged, it cannot be mended from inside, because its very purpose was and is to abolish the national and individual sovereignties. And you cannot master the future with bodies emptied of their souls and their cultures. The proof is that the very people that shout today, Europe, 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 are the ones that are letting collapse the Erasmus, Leonardo da Vinci, and Comenius programs for European cultural exchanges and training periods. There is no money for that too. There is only money in the Euro system to bail out the banks and destroy people and nations. Some among you would think that still there is something like the ExoMars project that was <coughs> explained yesterday. I must say that the ExoMars project has not been generated by the Euro system, which is about, by the way, to destroy it. The Euromass project comes from an impulse launched well before when the economy was not quite in the horrendous shape which is, which is now, which as it has become now. It is not only, of course, a matter of money. It's a matter of social selection and social selection among the youth. The average grants of scholarships, for example, in the Erasmus, in the Erasmus system are of 200 euros, and the youth that can travel are therefore only those which families can add up money to afford the living of their sons and daughters in a foreign country. More fundamentally, the programs are not based on exchanges of the best of our classical cultures, 
of our respective nations, but more and more on commercial, financial, or social studies to the proverbial Spanish inn ruled by potluck. The mission of Europe are therefore to be both against the British Empire and its own non-imperial empire, the failed Euro system, not to turn each of us in oneself, but to bring to Europe and the world what is needed today, and not tomorrow, today. As it was shown yesterday, the space policy is a science driver toward our future. Mars is what compels us to change on Earth. Curiosity and the ExoMars European-Russian missions are the pathways towards not only the much-needed Earth Defense Initiative, the strategic defense of the Earth, against the dangers coming from space, but they are footsteps towards a mastery of the solar system and beyond by men to secure a future for humanity when this solar system would start to collapse in about probably a billion years. But we have to start now because it's something that's demanded from us because we know the future. 300 years ago, it wouldn't have been a demand. Today, it is one, an immediate. At this point, Curiosity and ExoMars would be, let's be honest, end products would be dead ends if we don't fulfill our political mission. Europe and the United States, under the rule of the British Empire, would stop or downgrade to inadequate, senseless levels their space policies. Obama has already started. It is a system, stupid. It is indeed a system which, if you look to its shadows on the screens of the video games, is a cult of death. And those who have seen them cannot deny that. Even the organizers of these Paris Fair games admitted that it was addictive and that the killing of people was the basis of a high percentage of these games. While space means, on the contrary, a culture of life, to reestablish the knowledge of science because it asks questions for which answers not yet exist, and that's science. In that sense, the work in space programs is the most advanced form of what the nature of labor for the future of humanity has to become, a cognitive labor to confront the unknown and deal with what never happened before. But, again, it can't be done without an in-depth mobilization of the economy, of the economic systems, which can only be achieved with a global credit system. We have started in 2012 the celebrations of the 50th anniversary of the Elysee Treaty between France and Germany, and the year 2013 is labeled the year of Franco-German friendship. Thinking about it, we cannot look without a deep feeling of shame to our present government. The French wants, the French wants to continue the bailout of the banks because it has not the courage to confront them. Worse, it is about to present on December 19th to the Council of Ministers a banking reform, so-called, to preempt the European debate on Glass-Steagall. And it's a fact, and it's coming, and we are fighting against it in France with <coughs> mayors, elected officials, economists that have signed our global Glass-Steagall appeal call. The German government, on its side, wants to impose austerity to all its partners within the euro system, destroying by the same token, the capacity to import German goods on which the so-called German model is based. Such a criminal stupidity 
should be stopped. We have seen yesterday that the clouds of the financial storm are breaking war, war to the world. It is more than time, therefore, to change. It is more than time to take advantage, maybe, and uh, certainly I would say, of the fact that the British are about to leave the European Union, and it's time to take advantage of that to get us free of the rule of the city of London, but not as something which would be rhetoric. It should be to reestablish Europe on the basis of the principles of the goal Adenauer and some of its founding fathers, what they want, and a Europe of a community of purpose for <coughs> creating a future for the future generations. Uh, the goal speech that he gave to the German youth in 1962. It is more than time to look at the world, therefore, from the standpoint of Mars. The journalists during my French presidential campaign were not mistaken on that one. They focused after some time all the attacks against me as a hair-brained, eccentric, the eccentric guy that wants to cut the banks in two, in two parts, and develop a space program. Both, they said, were not allowed to be there by their financial masters, both and obviously the ideas of Lyndon LaRouche. What they were asking me all the time is why Lyndon LaRouche and you put a mustache on the face of this nice Barack Obama. So they have been shooting against their own feet in doing that. But they succeeded in siphoning out the vote, and therefore they won time. But they failed in controlling the development of the ideas. And the time they won is turning now against them. Those ideas are more than ever on the table, even in France with the absolute confusion of the political situation. Because what is at stake, the ideas are there because what is at stake is the very idea of European culture and what it means. We are at a moment where Mario Draghi has announced that for May 2013, the European Central Bank is going to issue a new series of euro bills with the face of the Phoenician princess Europe, the woman abducted by Zeus. Intelligent people noted that she is not a goddess, but she is a mortal being, and that is very bad omen for the euro. It is our time to move in tune and alert at every moment as of now, because things go very, very fast, to be tuned to what is going to happen in the United States around the fake of Barack Obama with coming changes there that can uniquely shift the situation here in Europe. The eyes of true European culture are never, have never been parochial, but look from top down from the standpoint of Mars. With such eyes, with such eyes of the mind, our challenge, the immediate challenge of us all in this room, is to mobilize for a new paradigm of world peace, much, much more than what has been mobilized for the continuous process of world wars in the course of the, what I should call the abominable, the ominous 20th century. It is our task because there could not be another one at the dimension of the challenge, except, except having no future. Let's therefore fulfill it here and now. And I must end telling you thank you. Thank you for what you are going to do henceforth. Thank you for understanding the future and acting accordingly, doing things yeah, that a few days ago you would have never expected from yourselves. Thank you.